cell clause makes a note unassumable. A do on cell clause makes a note unassumable. Now, in your generation of people getting interested in uh, real estate, you might not be familiar with a loan assumption because they're extraordinarily rare today. But having said that, in the past, it was not uncommon for me to buy your house this way. I pay you for your equity, and then I just simply take over your loan. In other words, you owe $80,000 on the house. You're selling me the house for $100,000. Why can't I just give you $20,000 cash and take over your loan? Okay. The reason you can't do that today is because most loans have a what? Do on sale clause. And if it's a do on sale clause, I can't allow someone to assume it. Now remember me talking about your word bubbles. Watch how your word bubbles work here. We're going to talk later in this uh, chapter about FHA and VA loans. FHA and VA loans are, in fact, assumable. FHA and VA loans are assumable loans. What can you tell me about FHA and VA loans by virtue of the fact that they're assumable? They don't have a what? They don't have a dual cell or alienation clause. Okay? This is the way you connect words together in this chapter. Not for test purposes, just, but just FYI, even though loan assumptions have been fairly rare, I bet you in your real estate career that you probably will see some loan assumptions. What's happening right now to mortgage interest rates? What's going on with rates right now? They're going up a little bit. They're not skyrocketing, but they're going up a little bit. Okay? Uh, I have a buddy that has a VA loan at two and three quarters percent interest. How'd you like to have that one? That is cheap money right there, two and three quarters. I told him, I said, first of all, if I were you, I would never sell this property. I would keep it forever, even if he keeps it as a rental unit. He's paying so little for his money, it would make more sense to keep it. I said, if you do decide to sell it, talk to me, because I would buy it from you because you're paying so cheap for it. I'd buy it as an investment property, and uh, it would probably cash flow. I'd just pay it for his equity and take over his uh, loan. VA and FHA loans are assumable. It, by the way, you have to qualify. I mean, you can't, somebody just can't walk in off the street and take it over. I'd still have to qualify with the bank, but I can take over this loan because it doesn't have a do on sale clause. Okay? Do on sale alienation. In the event of a sale, the bank calls the whole loan due, which in essence makes the loan unassumable. Did you get those bullet points out of it? All right. Let me bring in two words that are not on this list here, okay? Let me bring in two words that are not on this list. You've actually heard me talk about them, but now let's give them a name. A power of sale clause. Do you remember the power of sale clause? Let's make it easy. It's late in the day. Let's make it easy. The power of sale clause gives the trustee the power to sell the property on the courthouse steps. Based on a call from whom? The lender, which is known as what? Start with the letter B? Uh, Beneficiary, the lender's the beneficiary. So the power of sale clause, it literally says this. Whenever the beneficiary is knows that they're not going to get their, get their money, they can simply call a trustee and say, go do your administrative proceeding and start the foreclosure or not process. I'm not getting paid. Okay. Do you see how the acceleration clause and the power of sale clause kind of work together? Acceleration clause. Hey, borrower, I'm demanding my money. Borrower doesn't pay. Trustee, go sell it. Get my money. That's the way they work together. And then finally, the defeasance clause. The defeasance clause. Anytime I see the word defeat or defeasance, I think of the word defeat. And I'm going to use that here as well. You have a loan with the lender. The, re the, the reason they have a right to have a lien on your property is because you owe the lender money, right? Well, what's going to happen when you defeat the loan? You defeat the loan by paying it off. What right do you have? You have a right to have the lien removed, right? That's what the defeasance clause says. If you pay off the underlying debt, if you pay off the underlying debt, 
you have a right to have the lien canceled, satisfied. Borrower, if you pay off the underlying debt, if you defeat the loan, you have the right to have the lien satisfied, canceled. Make sense? Is that the same as the word amortization? No, no. Mm -hmm. uh, Amortization, you see how it can be used in multiple areas now. Yeah. And now granted, when you when you activate the defeasance clause, it means the loan has been fully amortized. Mm -hmm. But amortized just means the paying it off by making regular payments to principal and interest, yeah. and the defeasance clause says you won. You've paid it off. Now you have the right to have it canceled. So they I mean I can see where they go together, but they, they mean different things. Did you notice in that little exercise there that I put all five of these clauses together? Acceleration, alienation, prepayment penalty, a uh, power of sale, and the defeasance clause. If you're learning together, sometimes it might make it easier for test purposes to just learn them this way. And does it make sense to you that North Carolina requires that all notes have a defeasance clause? That's a requirement. The bank doesn't have a right to keep a lien against your property once you pay them off. Just real quickly on this, and I'll let you go for uh, today. Um, when you get a chance, look at this graphic. I, uh, it, it's interesting that this was uh, put together this way. And sometimes, just because I do this every day for a living, I don't automatically think about uh, these things. And I know that you're not as familiar with the words as I am. But later, we're going to talk about when you make a loan payment. A lot of people, when they make a loan payment, they make a payment to P-I-T-I. -I. So when you hear me talk about this in future lectures, PI stands for principal and interest. That's what you're paying to the bank for borrowing their money. The principal is your loan amount. The I, the interest, is what you're paying for loaning money. So part of your payment goes to principal, part of it goes to interest. Hey, on this, you're going to do a math problem to see how much goes to each one. Okay? TI stands for taxes and insurance. The T is for your real property taxes. Okay? Your I is for your homeowner's insurance. Now remember, the taxes and insurance do not help pay down your loan, right? When you make your payment, the lender will collect these. The lender will put these into an escrow account. That way, when your interest on uh, your, your insurance and your taxes come due, the money's already sitting in an account, so they can just send the money to pay it off. Now the bank is not doing this to do you a favor. The bank is doing this because they want to make sure your taxes and insurance are paid, right? So that's why they're doing it. If you put down a big down payment, you might not have to pay TI as part of your payment. But if you put down a small down payment, you don't have a lot of equity in your house, the bank will almost certainly want to make sure that you pay not only PI, but also TI. So that, that chart was actually a little more helpful than I gave it my credit for. Take a look at that tonight when you're at home. Just make sure you understand those components. You'll see where I'm starting on uh, Wednesday is with the word debt service, D-E-B-T, debt service. If you ever hear me talk about debt service, which you will, I'm only talking about the PI portion of that. The principal and interest, that's the only part that goes to servicing your debt. The rest goes into an escrow account. Have you had enough? Yes. For a Monday? Yes. yes.